overloading in C++. So you know like C++ is very famous for its uh, polymorphism, right? So polymorphism is an important feature of C++ and it means like processing the same thing in different way and overloading is a good example for polymorphism in C++. Anyway, let's move and deep dive into overload. So there are two types of overloading primarily. One is function overloading and other one is operator overloading. So let's discuss function overloading at first. Suppose if I want to create a function, okay, and uh, same function will have different properties. So sometimes we can add two numbers by using a function called add. In another situation, you can add two strings or you can add two strings and create a new string but the function name can be add right because it's doing the addition but it's not adding the numbers so suppose if i want to do multiple actions with same function name that's very much possible in c so that's called function overloading so it will be having same function name but it will having multiple definition and uh, one thing you have to remember while you are creating a overloaded functions is the definition of the function must be different from each other and also the type and number of arguments should also differ then only you can create a uh, create multiple functions with same name but for different purposes so what happens c++ will use the idea of return types and argument types to understand which function is being called you will not having a clear idea right now but when you see the program it will be clear for you i am guaranteeing that okay return types should be different but that kind of functions cannot be overloaded if there are like one function is returning integer value and other is returning a string value based on that you will not be able to overload a function okay what is overloading of a function same function name but different function definitions so we will be creating a function like that not creating one function many functions like that so let's move to the demo so here you have the example here i have a function called not a function a class called print data and i having three different function inside the class see the names of the function function one is also called print which is used to print a integer value the second function is also called print but it is used to print a floating point value third function is also called print it is used to print a character value so how you can differentiate which function should be called if i am willing to print a integer value which function should be called among this the first one should be called right if i am printing to planning to print a character value which should be called the third function will be called how we can differentiate that so for that we can use the type of arguments on the function. These are the function arguments. Here the function argument is int. Here the function argument is double. And here the function argument is car. So here we can use the type. And even you can use the number of arguments. Here all the functions in this case is having only one argument. But if some function called print is having two arguments. And we are calling the function with two arguments. That is that will be called. So here you can see there are two overloads because our compiler is very intelligent. Our uh, ID is very intelligent. It is also showing that our Visual Studio code can itself recognize that like two uh, uh, same function name, two other function also exists. Now let's execute this program and see it in action. So G plus plus function overload dot cpp. Sorry, I am not in desktop let me move to desktop first then let me execute this command okay this is some error so we can use string over here instead of char i am using string okay now i am trying to save this program and yes it's compiled now let's see i have created an object called pd pd.printer5 okay let's put a dot out dot slash a dot see first function printing int it is executed printing the integer value because i have passed the 5 which is an integer value so what will happen in the back end the number 5 will be matched over to these this one is match so it will be executed so uh, like the argument is 5 right which print function is having the right match will be the print function will be executed suppose if i have two arguments 
then also you can do the same you can overload the function so similarly we have the float and uh, character being printed over here so based on the type of this data this compiler found the right one right function and printed that that's it that's the only thing now suppose if i have two arguments okay void print same function name i'm overloading it again with two arguments int x comma int y so i have two arguments over here so now the print function i am giving c out two argument function then i am printing x endl is used to oh, x endl is used to let me give space okay go to the next line then i am printing the y now i am creating the same object but i am uh, calling the next print function print int and i am passing two values okay what should be the values 90 and 100 okay now let's save this program compile it again and see it in action a dot out see two argument function it picked the right one right this also had the same name print but this i have passed two arguments so this was picked so only the best match will be picked based on the number of arguments and the type of arguments okay you have to note that specifically based on best match number and type of arguments an overloaded function which means the function with the same name and different definition will be hope you have understood to, uh, this topic now let's go to our next topic is operator overloading so we have a lot of operators in c++ which we have already seen plus minus right modulus okay but the main important peculiarity of c++ it's we can if we have an existing operator but we can still give the operator a new meaning so we will be able to give the new meanings to existing operator in c++ so let me show you something suppose if i have an operator called plus it can be used to add two numbers three five so three plus five equal to eight that is one way of using this operator plus but i have one more way of using this plus i can just change the meaning of this plus suppose if i have two strings one is hello other is a and i want to add these two strings and create a new string called hello a then this meaning can be also done by plus operator so revoking the existing meaning of an operator and to create a new meaning to that operator that concept is called operator overload and th this can be done in both binary operator and unary operator binary operator means the operator which takes two arguments this is a binary operator plus is a binary operator because 3 plus 5 equal to 8 3 is one argument and 5 is another argument so it will be operating on two operands that will be binary operator some operators are unary unary operator means it have operating on a single operand okay so the examples for unary operators are increment and decrement operator so we use i plus plus right i plus plus which means i is the only operand you just need to increment the value of 5 if the value of 5 was 5 i plus plus will increment the value of 5 to 6 but there is not two operands only i is there right then unary minus is there i minus minus then logical not operator is there these are all example of unary operator so let's see how using c plus plus we can change the meaning of an operator and we can overload that in both ways both binary and unary operator okay here i have explained it again binary operator takes two arguments and following are the examples of binary operators like plus which is for addition minus for subtraction uh, slash for division so how you can overload the binary operator here is the syntax so class class name then public then return type operator here you will uh, give the operator uh, keyword then you will give the symbol symbol will be plus then you will give the number of arguments like in a comma in b or string a comma string b based on the meaning you want to give to our new operator okay let's go to the demo to understand this i have given you the explanation for the syntax already 
okay let's go to binary operator overloading part want to clear my screen okay so here you have complex which is a class and it's having two parts real and imaginary so what we are trying to do is we are going to add two complex numbers so to add two complex numbers we will be having what we will be having a real part and imaginary part and if you know mathematics how you can add two complex numbers you can you should add the real parts together then you should add the imaginary parts together that will be the result so input function will be calling the real part and imaginary part of a complex number okay then second complex number here you can go to this one first complex number dot input second complex number dot input we have created two complex numbers and one complex object for storing the result of this addition so result equal to complex one plus complex two here this object is complex one this object is complex two i will be giving the inputs real and imaginary part for complex one and complex two then i am adding this plus operator is used not a function is used over here but just i am putting this object and putting a plus sign on the middle that means like not our default plus operator it should be the overloader plus which should be called now let's go to the definition of our plus operator so this syntax i have already explained right and this is the argument it will accept an object as an argument then creating a temporary variable to hold the result temp dot real is equal to real plus object dot real real will be the value of the first object then object dot real will be the value of the second object okay upon getting the first object's real part then getting the second object's real part first object you not uh, need not to put this uh, object one or something you just need to put the variable name directly that's how you overload the operator it's syntax based name so plus object or real then second uh, first object imaginary part plus second object's imaginary part then you are returning the temp temp will be coming over to result so result dot output so output function will be showing the output complex number real part and imaginary part okay that's the only thing so let's see this in action compile this g++ binary op dot cpp i think this is dot yes okay a lot of errors are popping out so whenever there is a lot of errors you need to debug that so something is wrong over here complex const com and operator i thought this was going to be smooth 